Look at this reference range. It ends at 28 and his result is 43.55. It doesn't indicate that he produces more testosterone. Like we can see here, he produces 648 nanograms per deciliter out of his ball sack. It, it indicates that at the liver, the binding protein production is dysfunctional. So guys, Derek, moreplates18.com. Today we're going to be talking about Cobra Tate, the brother of... Tristan Tate, uh, former professional kickboxers, now turned, um, they're not like influencers necessarily, but they are uh, a big, I don't know, they're like two of the biggest names. I don't think they're like, you know, officially part of the manosphere or like red pill community, but they're otherwise um, guys that up and coming entrepreneurs and guys who are looking to maximize, you know, like self improvement and whatnot. Um, look up to as a source of motivation and kind of like a, uh, I don't know, a blueprint for, you know, how to do things. Uh, I don't know, get your head out of the matrix, essentially. So the um, reason I know of them is way back in the day, they made this video, Tristan Tate's Limitless with Gorilla Mind Rush. So this was the discontinued nootropic formula I created um, way back when Gorilla Mind first started. So they were uh, introduced to the brand through mutual friends. And, um, you know, they were like, made this hilarious fucking edit way back in the day. I highly recommend you go watch it. Most people probably don't even know this exists, but it's pretty goddamn funny. And uh, that's when I first learned of them and I've seen them kind of like, you know, ascend the ranks of, I don't know, net worth essentially over the years and become pretty uh, influential in the male self-improvement space. So reason I'm talking about this today is I was tagged in this post, since the dawn of time, the mediocre have perished. Open your eyes before it's too late. And he posts his testosterone levels to prove he's not on steroids or TRT. So he says here, can you send me my blood test to prove I'm not on steroids or TRT or any of the other shit users have to lose? Presumably losers have to use? I don't know. But anyways, so he gets sent this report from, I don't know who it is, but presumably his overseeing uh, medical provider or whoever. I don't really know. But anyways, it's a blood test result. Uh, we have Greg O'Gallagher in the comment section talking about how his test levels are similar. No TRT, and uh, down here we have more plates, more dates, Cobra Tate collab of the century, more plates, more dates, more plates, more dates. So people wanna get my insight on it. This is how real G's roll. Um, top G and up top boss. Wow, heart emoji eyes. Um, does it say your test level is 648 nanograms per deciliter? And then the comments down here. Yeah, so this is in nanograms per milliliter. So that is not the unit of measurement we are familiar with on the West Coast. We use nanograms per deciliter, but it's not very hard to convert it. You can just see NG per like slash ML. You just multiply it in order to get the nanogram per deciliter equivalent. So yes, it is indeed 648 nanograms per deciliter. So this is the calculator you can use, by the way, endo memo, it's a good, uh, uh, conversion calculator. We have nanogram per milliliter, 6.48, nanogram per deciliter, 648. So that's a pretty normal looking total testosterone level. Now going down to here, we have the free testosterone, um, libera ad testosterone, whatever the fuck. So presumably free tests. So like here we say around the same test levels as you with higher free tests as Greg O'Gallagher. Um, now there's not a whole lot else to go on from here. So this is, you know, his like exemplification of his natural status, essentially. So, you know, expectedly people are going to tag me in this shit and want to get my interpretation and we're going to get into it. So here we have um, the thing. The first thing I noticed that was weird is it says Andrew Emery Tate here. And then we have presumably age and it says like 28, I think. Um, I don't know. I'm pretty sure he's mid thirties. A reason being is somebody mentioned in the comment section down here, where is it? Somebody said, aren't you 35? And then he liked the comment. Now, I don't know if he just has somebody who's, uh, you know, liking all the comments as like a social media engager that he's hired because he's pretty much liked everything. But um, he liked the comment that said, aren't you like 35? So here he is down here liking the comment. So you would think that's some sort of confirmation. What's your point? It says 28 years old on the test. It's also from August of 2020, which doesn't add up. He's a known bullshitter. So I don't know, like, obviously that is a weird, you know, incongruency that, uh, he would have to clarify, but just aside from that, uh, I'm just assuming this is his blood test result and somebody just fucked up the age or whatever. This is from 
two, like a year and a half ago at this point. So obviously it's not that recent, but um, obviously it doesn't get this blood work done that frequently because as a, if you're a natural, you're probably not going to get it done as much as a guy who is, you know, enhanced or, you know, taking TRT. Not that you shouldn't, by the way, I definitely recommend it. But anyways, as far as interpreting the actual blood test results, let's just assume this is not fucking wrong. And this is just, you know, an, I don't know, a discrepancy on the um, recording of the lab company or something. It also makes me call into question the actual accuracy of the results then too, if they're like fucking up that significantly, but he would have a better explanation than me on why this is here or what this even means. Cause again, this isn't even my language here. So anyways, the main thing that's of note is the free testosterone. So this is on a reference range of one to 28.28 picograms per milliliter. So you see it's flagged here as high. So we see 43.55. So typically for a normal, like healthy, free testosterone level for like a high functioning male, you would look to have a two to 3% of your total T represented as free. So you wouldn't have too little of binding protein production or too much because too much would indicate probably like chronic keto dieting and or a prolonged calorie deficit or significant amounts of fasting or some sort of, you know, potentially a disease state or just suboptimal diet or too low on the other side of the equation. If you have too low of SHBG, could indicate metabolic dysfunction, could indicate non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, but most notably it could indicate androgen use. And that's what we see with guys on TRT in general, to be honest, and this is represented even in like most guys' blood work as you'll see for guys that are using not cream, but guys who are using exogenous injections, you'll see a disproportionately higher free testosterone from the driving down of SHBG caused by those exogenous administrations. So you typically have a guy with like, you know, borderline like, you know, like four to 5% even in some cases for free testosterone. So you could have a high free despite your total T being in range. And this again is why a lot of guys will have like more psychoactive activity, more aggression, more even like muscle building potential potentially on exogenous TRT above and beyond the stability of always having that chronic level sustained in your system without having to worry about pulsatile dips from a diurnal rhythm that would otherwise be caused by a natural like pulsation from your ball sack essentially. So guys who chronically maintain like a 648 with a higher free testosterone, you're not dipping up and down. If you have a shitty night of sleep, if you go out drinking, whatever, like your level is sustained because it's manually administered. So again, with him, he's posting this as a like proof that he's natural essentially. So what can we say off the bat with these markers? Well, picograms per milliliter, again, this isn't even the unit of measurement, first of all, that we'd wanna see. We'd wanna see a reference of nanograms per milliliter or nanograms per deciliter ideally, because it's more something that from our perspective, we can actually wrap our heads around more and is more I don't know, specific, whereby you're in like the hundreds for total and then you can dial down into the double digits for free. Whereas for this, you would be down into the, you know, like, fractionated amounts in uh, free test if you're going by nanogram per milliliter. It's just harder for us to wrap our heads around. So putting this in nanograms per deciliter, we have 648. Now you would wanna see a free test of two to 3% of that, which this reference range you'll notice is in a totally different unit of measurement. This picograms per milliliter is not something you are going to convert into nanograms per deciliter and get this equated number because this is based on an amino assay. And this is something I've talked about before. When you look at LabCorp's description of free testosterone direct, which presumably is what this is, we can see here immunoenzymatica, that's immunoassay presumably. So if we go to the LabCorp page for direct analog enzyme immunoassay testing for testosterone free direct, we can see here the range is in picograms per milliliter, despite the fact that totals are measured in nanograms per milliliter or nanograms per deciliter, we get a weird fucking equation that he equates to it's like a cheaper way to analyze free testosterone levels and it uses a totally different metric of measurement that makes it totally impossible to compare it directly to nanogram per deciliter totals. However, the reference range is still pretty similar to nanograms per deciliter where we can get a fair framework whereby if you're still in the ballpark of like the low 20s, like you're pretty much like, you're pretty dialed in depending on your total T levels. But having like a like a 40 plus indicates some level of like fuckery going on whereby you are either using some sort of drug and or you are in a state of dietary induced, I don't know, insulin resistance, 
um, non-alcoholic non fatty liver disease, whereby your liver is um, dysfunctional and binding protein production is all fucked up. So anyways, we're going to get into that shortly, but just kind of like further elaborating on this and elucidating what I can interpret from this. Um, first of all, I'm going to say off the bat, him posting this does more harm than it does good <laughs> for exemplifying how he's not on TRT. Like this looks like a flagship, like guy who pins once a week his TRT for a guy who drives his SHBG down and has a disproportionately high free by like a significant margin. Like look at this reference range. It ends at 28 and his result is 43.55. It doesn't indicate that he produces more testosterone. Like we can see here, he produces 648 nanograms per deciliter out of his ball sack. It, it indicates that at the liver, the binding protein production is dysfunctional. So this has nothing to do with your free test. You produce more, like you literally have less binding proteins binding up the test. So you're in a hyper androgen dominant state, but not in a healthy way necessarily. Like your total T is still average or like, it's not a bad thing. Like this is totally normal and it's not necessarily indicative of subpar ability to gain muscle or subpar ability to do anything because androgen receptor density and actual expression at the AR gene expression level is going to dictate how you respond to however much test is in your system to begin with. So this is a totally normal level. It's this level that's all fucked up to be honest. So here's an example of my most recent test results that we went over on the Super Physiological Man podcast. So you can see here, total T, 930, right over the LabCorp cutoff. Here on his uh, test results, this would otherwise be um, high, you know? Different places have different classifications of what's high or not. In Canada, they will literally say you're high if you're over like fucking 800 in some cases. Like you can literally be, have the most piss poor test production and be in range in some countries. It's fucked up. But here, 850, that's a pretty low high end of a reference range, to be honest. Um, some labs go up to like a thousand. It kind of depends where you are, but ultimately we can still tell like 930 would be like high normal. Now, again, this is manually manipulated and maintained. So this is, this 930 is chronic. And this is why you see gonadotropin levels crushed. You see a luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone level undetectable at 0.3, well, less than 0.3 each. So this is indicative of the lack of, or the significant negative feedback caused by testosterone aromatizing to estrogen, telling your hypothalamus to no longer spit out GNRH because you need none because you do not have enough need for testosterone production in your body. So this is where LH and FSH get crushed by TRT and you see a disproportionate rise in free test usually. So if you continue through this blood test result, you can see my free test in a second here. We're about to zoom out here and you can see, um, might have to fast forward a little bit here just so we can get to it faster. So here we go, zooming on the free test. You see this high free test, 37.57 with a percent free testosterone of 4.04. .04. This is almost like, clini it's clinically out of range simply because my total T is out of range too. However, this percent free testosterone is pretty indicative of low SHBG. Like if you find my SHBG on this blood test, I forgot where it is exactly, but it is somewhere in the borderline single digits. I think it was like 10 or something, which is otherwise indicative again of a lot of the things I said, you know, NAFLD, like uh, insulin resistance, but most notably the reason for me, the TRT administrations. However, for Cobra Tate, what is it exactly? Well, we couldn't actually say for certain that it's not TRT use until we see his gonadotropin. So I will say though, I follow this guy for a long time. I do actually think he's natural. However, I do think that what he has posted has completely kind of like done the opposite of helped reinforce what he's trying to prove here. So here, this is showing that he basically has the equivalent level to a guy who's on like a moderate TRT dose. To prove otherwise, we would need to see his luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone levels, which super easy to do. Go get a total test done again with a free test, as well as a concurrent luteinizing hormone and follicle sti stimulating hormone test. And that will be able to see if there's any negative feedback or not to your HPTA caused by exogenous androgens. So that is how you would actually show at this moment in time, you're not on exogenous TRT. Um, right now, this test does not, like it doesn't help at all. It shows his age is like wrong apparently. The date of the test is a year and a half ago. Total test is in range and the free test is disproportionately high. Like this is like flagship TRT use, to be honest. So I'm just, I'm just even telling like Cobra Tate, if you're fucking watching this dude, like you might actually have an issue. And as far as, and when I say an issue, I mean like 
like from a health perspective. You know, you can take from that what you will. It could have been transient though too. Like this is stuff that's a snapshot in time of your blood work. Just because you had like a shitty fucking week where you had a bad diet or shitty sleep or whatever, like there are many times guys could otherwise induce transient states of metabolic dysfunction simply by, I don't know, if you're like, you know, pulling all-nighters for fucking work. Like you, there's a lot of reasons that you could have bad looking blood work. And ultimately that's just a snapshot in time of that one point in time. So follow-up blood work could um, show that he is indeed natural and additionally show that he's not in like an unhealthy state. Because ultimately all of us at some point have probably had dysfunctional looking shit too. Um, it's just a matter of the fact that he posted it as an example of being like a fucking, I don't know, hyper like secretor of testosterone essentially, which it's like pretty, it's just normal production, but the binding protein production is just like, that's what's concerning. So by the way, if you want accurate blood testing, go to Merrick Health and down here on the right labs to analyze your health, you can get our complete packages, which have been vetted and audited by me personally. In addition, you can get actual singled out biomarkers with high sensitivity. So that immunoassay that he got done, it's like the shittiest way of measuring your free tea. If you actually want an accurate, the most accurate free tea based on your total, which would be ideally calculated using liquid chromatography, liquid chromatography with tandem mass spectrometry, you would want to get a free T done via equilibrium dialysis. So you could get a free direct through LabCorp and get like a picogram per milliliter extrapolated number that's otherwise going to be honestly like a bit fucking weird to look at, or you can get an equilibrium dialysis total uh, free T based on a total T through LCMS and get an actual like dialed in level that is also not gonna be conflated and cross detect other synthetic anabolic agents you're using. So if you're a guy who's using anabolic steroids, if you don't get equilibrium dialysis free T, your free direct is going to be totally fucking inaccurate. Like on Nandrolone Solo, when I did that experiment, cross detected Nandrolone when I had zero tests in my system. So this is not something you want to, uh, like personally, I would highly advise paying the extra money for high sensitivity testing at all times, unless you're like a natural who is just trying to get a, I don't know, like just like the most cost efficient, budget friendly version of testing, or you live in a country that otherwise won't give you access to it. Cause again, I don't know if where he lives, you can even get high sensitivity testing. Like a lot of times they have to outsource this shit to labs in the States and like ship their, ship your blood on ice, like across the country and shit or over borders to get to where it needs to get like a basic DHT or get a basic like high sensitivity estradiol. Like again, estradiol too, something you don't wanna get done through Roche electrochemiluminescence radio immunoassay. That is a cheap test that you can get done, but I wouldn't recommend it. I would recommend using liquid chromatography. I can't even talk. Liquid chromatography with tandem mass spectrometry here. It is more expensive, but it is ultimately accurate. I've had my blood tested using both assays simultaneously on the same sample. One showed the complete opposite side of the reference range. So it's not as accurate as you would think. And there's cross detection here if you're on synthetic anabolic. So that is definitely notable. Now circling back to his blood work, low SHBG, what could that be indicative of? Obesity is definitely not obese. The guy is in shape, looks fucking great. Insulin resistance, which occurs in type two diabetes. Does he have some level of insulin resistance? He certainly doesn't look metabolically dysfunctional or unhealthy, but it doesn't mean you couldn't have that circumstance. Hypothyroidism could be a genetic trait. You never know. Definitely something to look at. You would get your TSH tested, see if it's elevated, get your T4 done, and then ideally you would also get like a reverse T3, a T3, and you would see where you're at for that thyroid level. Because again, this kind of stuff could go heavily overlooked and this could be a proxy for it. So despite the fact that it just looks like most people are going to say who even know this shit are going to say, look, this is proof that you're not natty. And to be honest, it would be hard to prove them otherwise when you look like this dude. Like this is a pretty fucking solid physique for a guy who's natty and just like drinks fucking scotch and like drives supercars. Uh, again, though, the guy trains hard as far as I know on a regular basis, like all the time. Um, I don't know what his diet's like, but he's like, you know, a genetically blessed dude. So... And he's looked like this for a while. Like I can't see his physique like drastically changing necessarily, but I'm a lot of it is giving him the benefit of the doubt knowing that I've like historically followed his progression a little bit, you know? But anyways, like off the bat, I can tell you the blood work, you know, it doesn't help the case, that's for sure. But anyways, things to look into on follow-up would be those blood tests I mentioned. But in addition, checking out this shit, like was he drinking heavily during that time? 
I don't know. Um, or what did he have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease most notably because alcohol drinking could be um, have a differing effect on SHBG transient, transiently. Acromegaly, too much growth hormone in adults. I guess this is possible, you know? The, like he's not like a fucking giant necessarily, but I mean, maybe it's worth checking IGF-1 levels. If you have significantly elevated IGF-1, this could be indirectly causing it. Um, Although it would be odd, you know, for a natural to have this, but that's why these are like the weirdest, like worst case scenarios, but they would explain it if you want to get further, more elaborate testing to dial it in. Because again, even if you have high free T, like that's great and all for like, you know, psychoactive effects, being a bit more aggressive, performance-based outcomes a little bit, but there's a point whereby you become a bit more volatile. It's harder to have emotional stability. You react a bit more. I don't know, in a more volatile manner, manner literally, where you are a lot, a lot less able to process situations effectively. I'm not saying that that's what you know happens with him necessarily, but simply hormonally, more free active androgens in your body. Like this is where the roid rage concept comes from. The higher the free androgen circulating in the brain, the more psychoactive activity in like an aggressive context or mood volatility context or emotional stability, et cetera. So again, like maybe you'd be more rationally, I don't know, like, uh, I don't know, like the implications of that can vary. Like for some people, this could be useful, you know, who are more, I don't know, parasympathetically driven and have, uh, I don't know, higher serotonergic activity. Maybe this is going to balance that out and give you more dopaminergic, you know, drive to go be productive and do, you know, entrepreneurial things. You never know. Like I have a friend who has a total T that is like 1600, which is, or like I've, the highest I've seen of his blood test was almost like two and a half X this total with a free T similar from what I recall. And his SHBG was actually in range, but it was a result of an adrenal tumor that had been sitting there his whole life. So like there are weird circumstances that people could be natural and still have, you know, explained via like very weird out there reasons. And ultimately they dictate the way they behave. Like that guy is a very successful entrepreneur, had a seven figure corporate exit many years ago and is like actually a supercar enthusiast too. And he has like a fucking sky high free T. You know, is it a coincidence that some of these guys are like hyper androgen dominant? You know, perhaps not. Um, so anyway, some things to look into. Androgen steroid use, acromegaly, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, Cushing disease, hypothyroidism, insulin resistance, obesity. The things that I would be most curious about would be getting like a fasting glucose, a fasting insulin, and a hemoglobin A1C, checking IGF-1 levels too, getting a TSH done, a T4, a T3, and thyroid, uh, liver values, metabolic, getting a metabolic panel as well. Um, and yeah, I think that would rule out a lot of these like weird, like outlier disease states that you wanna hope you don't have, to be honest. And if you're actually natural, and this is like occurring on a perpetual basis, like this is not just like a weird, like one-off blood test. Cause again, I don't know how much I can even trust this if it's not like accurately depicting like what his age even is necessarily or the dates or whatever. I'm just going off the blood test results. If he's actually natural, like this would be like actually concerning a little bit from a health standpoint. So just my interpretation from a literature perspective, science-based perspective, that is what I think based on my historical data points too of referencing fucking hordes of blood work and having a preventive medicine platform with a bunch of doctors that otherwise do this for a living. So anyways, take from that what you will. If you guys want high quality medical oversight and access to self-service labs as well, where you can order this kind of blood work yourself and see where you're at. Very, very critical in my opinion for longevity, quality of life, vitality, etc. Getting yourself dialed in. You can check out Merrick Health, link in the description below. And um, I don't know, we'll see if we get a follow-up from Cobra Tate on this or if he even cares or if this is even like, if this is a troll post, like, I don't know. So uh, we'll see, that's it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Is he natty, is he not? What do you think of the blood test results? All the comments help the algorithm, they're much appreciated. Like, like subscribe, check out my blog, moreplacemoredates.com, follow me on Instagram, and moreplacemoredates. Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, TikTok, maybe. I don't even know if I'm up right now. Might be banned there. Apple Podcasts, Spotify. And if you want to support the channel, anything I'm associated with, it's all in the video description below. Talk to you guys soon.